When you're working in high sulfidation epithermal systems, one of the best indicators for ore is barite. It's usually deposited right with that little pulse of hydrothermal fluid that deposits all of the copper minerals late in the system. But it's extremely insoluble, so it's very resistant to weathering. So even if all of the copper minerals have been leached away, the barite often survives at surface. I've just found a little vein of it here, and I've been mapping along this ridge here, which is massive and buggy silica. So I know I'm close to the feeder structure for this system, and now I've seen some barite, I know I'm in the right place. It forms these distinctive slab-shaped crystals, sometimes in radiating groups, like you can see some radiating away from that point there. There's another big long slab there. And it looks a bit like calcite, and it has very good cleavage, and I think if I turn it around like this, you can see the reflection off the cleavage there. And the hardness is about the same as calcite. You see it scratches quite easily, it's about three. But of course, because it's a sulfate and not a carbonate, it doesn't react to acid. In this piece here, which is broken across the vein, you can see some of those bright cleavage reflections, just like a carbonate there. And the vein is cutting some buggy silica with boxworks after sulfide in the cavities and some clay and alunite in the cavities further out. Here's another example of barite showing that characteristic slab shape of the crystals and some perfect cleavage faces. In this case, growing inside a cavity in a quartz vein with some ultra-fine comb quartz crystals from a high sulfidation epithermal system in South Korea. So if you're in one of these systems and you see something that looks a little bit like calcite, but it doesn't fizz and it's got long bladed crystals, take a closer look. If it's barite, you might really be onto something.